Hello, I'm Kelsey. And I'm Mary Janine. And we've received a couple phone calls this week asking about a DIY face mask tutorial. How do you do it? There's a lot of sewers at home that want to keep op occupied with projects like this. Um, we also agree with a lot of people that this could be a potential preparation for the near future. Um, we also just watched a recent news article that there is a hospital in Georgia that is making covers like this uh, to be used over the N95 mask. Covers like this do need to be washed hourly or after every single use. Um, these are not medically proven, but we are making them for preparation because we don't actually know what we're going to need tomorrow. So let's begin. Let's make a face mask. So we've got here one of the masks that we're going to show you how to make. Um, it's got three pleats on either side to give you some volume. Let me just put this on so you see what's going on. Um, the elastic goes around the ears. And I've got a twist tie here, a little piece of twist tie metal that allows it to um, mush around the nose. You probably can't hear me very well with that on, but I think that that gives it a lot more fitted quality to be able to go around the face. All right. So what we're going to start with is, here you go. We're going to start with uh, two pieces of cotton fabric. Yes, you can use a flannel. Yes, you could put some interfacing in between if you wanted to to keep even more, more um, body. Body, thank you. Or just shielding. You know, three layers of fabric shielding instead of two. But I'm for this demo, we're going to use two pieces of cotton. Yeah, let me talk a minute about the elastics. We've got some different types of elastic here. This is a nice soft cotton uh, flat elastic that might be useful and what I used on mine because this is what I had at home the old annex I bought a big old hunk of elastic that I feel like is going to use use it the rest of my life so this is more of a what polyester nylon mm -hmm. um, but it looks like it's a quarter of an inch wide we've also got some narrower elastic I even found some lingerie, lingerie elastic looks like it. yeah so this would be nice and soft so this one, I think this would work quite well so we got some different options here and we'll talk about how you can get that safely later as an order. Another, another ingredient is twist ties. Now I, I, for some reason, I saved twist ties and I used them all up. So I went to my friendly Ace Hardware and found this. I believe these are garden ties and it's, there's uh, plastic and then metal in the center and we're going to cut a piece and that's what I'm using now inside my mask. All right, so I have my fabric here. We've got a nine by six piece. We actually need two of those, right? Two nine by six pieces. And I ran this fabric through the washer and dryer, got it nice and hot and clean. So I, I, that's why the edges surged so the fabric doesn't ravel in the washing machine. Um, I've got two seven inch pieces of elastic for the ear pieces. And those are gonna go in, I'd say, just roughly three quarters of an inch from the edge. And I like to sew, sew, sew. So a good zigzag there, and that really holds it in nicely. And then once that's in, we can sew, sew, sew the other one. And the same on the other side. So here, through the magic of television, we've got that done, sewn down. All right. I'm going to take my second piece of fabric, and that's going to go on top. And we're going to sew all the way around, except for a turning hole. So when I go to sew all the way around, one of my tips is, I don't use a lot of pins in my in my sewing room, but I like to put two pins to tell me that that's where I'm going to stop sewing. So I'm going to start here, maybe a little back stitch. We're going to go all the way around carefully because you want to match up the corners and you want to get everything right. And we're going to come back and we're going to stop at the two pins. We, of course, we never run over pins, do we? And again, a back stitch there as well. So again, we've got an example of that. Here it is. I've sewn all the way around, Oop, and there's my, there's my opening there. I like to clip my corners, and I have, where's my scissors, there they are. I like to show you how I'm gonna clip my corners. Yes, of course, you could just go right across, but I kinda like to cut, make two cuts, to cut off the excess fabric that way. So we're gonna do that on all four corners, and I've done that in this case. Get rid of all the trash. And here it is. Now I'm gonna flip this right side out. It's ready. I have another tip for you. I like to take my finger and my thumb and press, the, press that corner in and 
the corner pops out a lot easier if you have hold of it. Yes, you could use, yes, you could use a turning tool, but I don't really feel like that's necessary. Just use the fingers that are on your hand. So we're gonna flip one more over, nice and tight, and there it is. Okay, flip this over, all right. So far, so good. This is an opening. You don't have to sew it shut quite yet. So here it is, I've pressed it. In this case, there's my opening. Now here's our trick. We're gonna take that twist tie, um, here we go. We're gonna take that twist tie material, or maybe you are like me and you keep your twist ties in your kitchen drawer. Now's a good time to use them. I'm gonna tuck this twist tie in the seam allowance and kind of in the middle. And of course I had to make it flat first. All right, so that's kind of tucked in there. I'm not gonna take this to the sewing machine. I'm just gonna pretend I did. The first thing I'm gonna do is just sew a top stitch on the inside of that green piece. I don't wanna run over it because we don't wanna have to bring our sewing machine in, um, but I am gonna do a nice top stitch along there. All right, now, now that we've top stitched that, and you can wait to the end to top stitch it, but I like to do it now while it's all stuffed into that, that seam allowance. You're gonna put, put three pleats on each edge, and here's where I do use pins. You could also use those lovely uh, wonder clips that we, we have all known and loved. We didn't realize we needed them until we buy them, and then you discover that there's all kinds of uses for those wonder clips. Um, so three pleats on one side, three pleats on the other side. Now, I'm, maybe I'm a perfectionist, but if my pleats are gonna go this way on this side, I want my pleats to go this way on that side. So that's just something to think about. You know, if the pleats are going in different directions, I don't think anybody's gonna turn down your, your gift of a face mask. But anyway, three pleats on both sides, and then you're gonna top stitch all the way around, and you're done. That is done. You could wash this again if you wanted to. Another idea would be to embroider or sharpie a little, uh, maybe an L or an M or an S for the size if you wanted to do that. You could use your serger to go around the first time. So there you are, you're using a serger. If you wanted to assembly line these in your, um, in your sewing room, somebody could be on the serger, somebody could be on the embroidery machine, and somebody could be on the sewing machine, and you could knock these puppies out. So as you can see, Face masks can be very easy to make. You can make a lot of them in a short amount of time. Uh, once again, this is not a medically certified device. This is something that we've come up with should the need arise. We like to be prepared and sewers like to help. Thanks for watching.